squeeze England and the breakdown area was going to be very, very important and the collisions and South Africa won those all day, all day long. So oh. that's the reason why I feel England lost the pressure of the South Africa brought to the game and England couldn't cope. And, uh, that's what the result. Mm. Okay, but you look quite humble now. You've okay. been humble. Wasn't that humble before? <laughs> <laughs> You've been humble with the result. But let's talk about this one now. South Africa, before that game, mm. it felt like South Africa had what it took to go all the way yeah. to win it. But yes, England. And uh, we talked about, I said, if South Africa wins, um, I mean, if England wins that one, or rather won it, it would have been an upset in my own opinion. But you mm -hmm. said, no, South Africa winning would have been um, the upset. More of an upset. So who would yeah. say this was a major upset? Yeah, in the well, most World people Cup. thought England, well, England were the clear favourites yeah. yeah. in terms of the performance through the World Cup and also because South Africa were playing with a very narrow game, mm. a lot of kicking and stuff. So a lot of people thought, well, without possession, England will have more ball and they'll be able to create more chances. Unfortunately, what happened for England was that South Africa was so dominant in the breakdown area, yeah. England had, were going backwards so that they couldn't get their attack going and also they were not precise, they made a lot of mistakes. Oh, so that added pressure to it. And we never thought that Sinclair, the prop, was so important for England going off in the first 10 minutes. Yeah. And England's scrum disintegrated. And South Africa got, what, 12 points exactly. from penalties from the yeah. scrum. So as soon as you, can't, you don't have parity in your scrum, it's going to be a long day for you as a team. Now, looking at um, the formation, the setup of the coach um, at Eddie Jones, would you say that, um, I wouldn't say it was a case of underrating the South Africans, yeah. and he wasn't also defensive. I think the South Africans were more defensive than uh, the English uh, team. Now, way forward now, what do you think England should do to better themselves? I don't think it's a case of um, lacking anything in particular. I think you've got to look at um, World Cup finals as individual games. You've got to look at them in terms of um, the opposition being able to plot a particular strategy for that moment. Oh. Um, we're still confident that England, if uh, England and Africa played each other five times, I would expect three, a 3-2, three still something like a 3-2 um, outcome. Mm -hmm. But South Africa employed a tactic um, and it worked for them very well. If we look at if you want to look at some technical things, we've already mentioned the scrum, which might bore a lot of your, a lot of your viewers. But yeah. um, a critical point in the match was when England lost their prop, and they weren't able to compete in the scrum, and they lost a lot of uh, a lot of points, a lot of uh, territory, and they couldn't establish good ball to work with. Mm. But on top of that, England added to their mistakes by um, running balls, not, running they, balls they shouldn't have dropping balls that they, 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 should have, they should have held on to. Mm. And they pretty much played into South Africa's hands. Mm. I mean, to be fair, I don't want to take anything away from South Africa, exactly. but they were brilliant on the day. Mm -hmm. yep. Absolutely brilliant yep. in terms of the game management, the game, the game they wanted to play. So congratulations uh, mm. go out to the my South Africa, no, for sure. my Safa friends. Yeah. So uh, yeah. I'm sure I'll see them in Cape Town over New Year. <laughs> okay. <laughs>